Hey y'all, it's Caroline from bornandneworleans.com and today I'm going to do a mirror tree walkthrough. Okay, first off you need to test at ancestry.com. You need to do the DNA test at ancestry.com. If you haven't already, then you won't be able to use this method to find uh, shared ancestors. This is my mom's DNA match list on Ancestry and the mirror tree method typically works really well with um, a close second or first, second, third cousins, close family. So and let me tell you what a mirror tree is. Mirror tree is simply a copy of your DNA matches tree. So if I go over here and click view match, I'll show you a copy of their tree. I'm not going to show you their entire tree, um, but this is kind of the gist of what you'll be seeing. Um, a mirror tree is simply a copy of their tree, so you would recreate their tree. Now let's move up here to where it says predict a relationship. Predict a relationship as second cousins, possible range of second to third cousins. If you click on the little info button down here, you can see that this shows you the amount of shared DNA. I'm going to show you a chart. This chart shows you total amount of shared, um, total Cinemorgan shared half identical or better. And you can see here it's 212 and uh, my mom and her second cousin, or predicted second cousin, shared 250. I'm going to bring this a little closer. And so possible relationships, second cousins, first cousins twice removed, half first cousin once removed, or a half great great aunt or uncle. And I want to tell you this because um, for a long time I got stuck thinking she could only be a second cousin and a first cousin was just too close. Now my mom has a second cousin once removed that is confirmed, a confirmed second cousin once removed, but he falls in the fourth, in the predicted fourth cousin category and he only shares 36 uh, centimorgans. So if you look down here, you can barely see it, Third cousins once removed is 26, and I don't know, I don't know what it was in his range, but he falls in the predicted fourth cousin match on Ancestry. So, just, just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're back on this page. What you need to do now is you need to start, um, you need to start your copy of their tree, your mirror tree. The reason why it's called a mirror tree is because it is it's pretty much just a copy. <laughs> so um, you can either, you can do that, you can uh, do this a couple ways. You can create a new mirror tree or you can add their tree into an existing mirror tree that you have. Um, I've done both ways. If you want to add it to your existing tree, you can go to one of the deceased ancestors and click on him and then a little pop out will come up and you can click on view full tree and then somewhere over in this area you'll see a tools and then you can drop down like it'll be a drop down menu and click save to tree and you can save that to your existing mirror tree and build it out that way This is how you start a new tree. Um, I like to do a split screen. How to, If you want to get this screen up here, you just click trees and this will drop down to say create and manage and then you can create, it. once you click on that it'll say create tree. Um, right here this is where you want to put your DNA match. If you don't know their name, you can put in their username. Um, and then build out their tree based on what you see over here. Something that's really important about a mirror tree is it needs to be private. All ancestry trees by default are public. They're all automatic. They're automatically public. So you want to click on 
uh, your tree. Once you get it, once you get it started, you can click on whatever you named it up here. It'll drop down to tree settings. Click on that, and then you want to go over here to privacy settings, and then change the privacy settings to private tree, and also prevent your tree from being found in searches and save changes. Now you want your tree, if you remember looking back, I think there was only these people in the tree. Um, you want to build it out and you want to you want to build it out as far as you can. You obviously you want to build out the mother side as well, but for privacy reasons I'm opting to not show the mother side. Um, so you want to build it out better and as far back as you can and once it's built out you are ready to link it. Link your DNA to their tree and I'll show you how to do that now. You go to your DNA homepage on Ancestry.com and click on settings. Go down here where it says family tree linking. If you already have it linked to somebody, you just click edit. And again, I'm going to stress to you that it needs you need to make sure that your tree is private. Um, because you are getting ready to link your DNA to one of your cousin's family trees. Uh, so <laughs> choose your tree that you just made and type in the name of your DNA cousin or your DNA match right here and click link to DNA. Give this give Ancestry system a few days to find shared ancestor hints. It used to take a little bit less time but now there are so many people on Ancestry DNA um, that it just takes a little bit longer. That's not necessarily a bad thing because now the more users that test, the more chances of you getting a closer cousin. So just look, look at it on the bright side. Um, these are shared ancestor hints and these will help you determine how you and your second cousin are related. And who you who are your direct ancestors? So I'm going to show you just one shared ancestor hint right here. Click View Match, and this is pretty much what you'll end up seeing. It'll say Shared Ancestor Hint, and this is the shared ancestor between the second cousin that I have the DNA linked to and then the cousin that I just clicked on, the fourth cousin. So their shared ancestors are Christian Klein and Gertrude Knopp. This doesn't necessarily tell me that this is my mom's direct ancestor, but it does point me in a direction to start looking. And um, I'll show you how I kind of figured this out. What I like to do is I like to print out the pedigree view of the DNA matches family tree and I like to make a little tally whenever I have whenever a shared ancestor hint pops up when I go down that list of shared ancestor hints and that first match had Christian Klein and Gertrude Knopp I'd put a little tally on Christian Klein and one on Gertrude Knopp and I'd go down to the next match and I'd look to see what the next shared ancestor hint was and if it's uh, Johannes Klein and Anna Spritzhorn. I'd put a little tally right here and a little tally right here. And what you're looking for is a pattern. You want to see a pattern where all of your hints, all the shared ancestor hints, are kind of bundled together. Where they might be, they might be only on this branch. And if it there, if that's the case, if that's only on this branch and you have no relationship to the knop line, then you might want to look at Johannes and Anna's children. And then this might be like a great uncle or something. Um, but if you have shared ancestor hints on both, both of these lines, um, then you might want to look at Christian Klein and Gertrude Knopp's children 
as um, <clears throat> possible ancestors. But in the case in the case for my mom, she has shared ancestors on all of these people. She has cousins that are related to all of these people. So now I can confirm that Christian Klein, Gertrude Knopf, Joseph Lang, and Maria Jordan are all possible direct ancestors. So that brings me down to their kids that got married, and that's Jacob Klein and Anna Rosa Lang. And now I'm gonna look at their children. Now for the longest time, I completely discredited this. I thought, okay, I my mom is second cousins with this person, so it has to be either on this side or on this side. Um, and I don't know why, it just, I just never got the fact that it could be a different relationship other than a second cousin. I, I don't know. I've been doing this for so long and it's, it just kind of dawned on me, hey, it could be closer. It could be a first cousin twice removed. Um, and seeing as how Lewis here was born in 1910 and my mom was born in 1968, I think that's definitely in the realm of possibilities. So I'm going to look at Jacob and Anna's children. So again, the reason I'm looking at them is because I have shared ancestors on all of these lines. All of these lines. If I go back, I'll probably have little tallies on every single branch. So here's Jacob and Anna and their list of kids. And I'm going to start with Edith. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do research on Edith. I'm going to find out who she married and work out his family tree and put in their kids. So here's Edith and her husband. You can see here that I have worked my way back on his family tree. And the next step, once you have his family tree worked out, you're going to link your DNA to one of their kids. And once you link your DNA to one of their children, you Again, give the system a few days to find shared ancestor hints. And um, if no new shared ancestor hints pop up, then you work, then you go down to the next child of Jacob and Anna. You go down to the next child and you do the same thing. You find their spouse, you add in the spouse's family, and then you link your DNA to one of their children. Now, if you get shared ancestor hints on that next one, then you possibly on the right track. You need to, again, confirm every line on the spouse's family tree. It doesn't, it won't work if you only have shared ancestor hints appear on the Bates line. That won't work um, because especially this is 1820s, probably born in the early 1800s, late 1700s. It's possible that you're related to the Bates but in a different way. If you can't confirm the other lines, then you might need to move on to the next child. <clears throat> so, um, but if you had shared ancestor hints on all of these lines, then you'd start looking at, let's say for instance, I had shared ancestors on Dennis and Edith's line, on, on both of this entire family tree, then I would look at their children now do the same thing. I'd find whoever this is, I'd find her spouse, add in his ancestors, and then link to one of their children. Wait for the shared ancestor hints to pop up. And if I have shared ancestor hints, I'd do the same thing with their kids. So that, the, and that closer and closer, as you can see, you know, you start off with um, possibility of these people being direct ancestors. And all of a sudden you have shared ancestors on one of their children on, and their spouse, and then you, you're just that much closer to figuring out um, your family line. And then you go down another generation, another generation, and soon it'll just all come together and you'll be able to find out where you fit in to the family tree. All right, guys, that was it. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you, to you. And if you have any questions or comments, 
please don't hesitate to um, to contact me. You can contact me on my website at bornandneworleans.com. I have lots of blog posts and articles that I think might be helpful to those of you if you are using um, DNA to find family. And um, I just want to say this is some this process was taught to me a few years ago by a DNA detective, and since she taught me this method. I was able to um, confirm, find and confirm my mom's maternal line. And without this method, it would have taken me much, much longer. So uh, this, this method does work. And if you have the patience and the time to devote to, to this, then you will be able to break down those brick walls and find family. So, um, like I said, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you stick with me and look for, for new videos in the future. Have a great one, y'all.